Welcome to the setup manual for the HiPod X-Line. Let's begin with the cases. We've simplified the unit into two cases, one for the tube and base, and another for the accessories. The handle on these cases for 2014 has been beefed up to take even more wear and tear. To begin setting up your unit, you will start with the accessory case. Find the yellow base plate with wheels inside and place it on the ground. Now you are going to want to retrieve your tube and base case. From inside this case, grab the attached tube and base and place them into the plate on the ground. You will see in the next portion of this video that on the base plate there is a ratchet that must be unlocked to receive the base and tubes. Now that the base has been inserted into the base plate, you will need to lock it into place. Find the ratchet at the bottom and turn it until it becomes tight. You can pop it out to the side to readjust its position, lock it back into place, and turn to secure the ratchet. Now we will begin the leg setup. On arrival, you will find that your HiPod legs are locked into the closed position with the leg locking pin. You will need to remove this pin and move it and the leg to the exterior hole, locking the pin through the leg itself and the bracket. You will not lock the pin either behind the leg or in front of the leg, as this does nothing to secure it before elevation. You will see that these are examples of how not to lock the leg. Again, make sure to lock the leg with the leg pin on the exterior hole so that the pin is going through the leg and the bracket itself. This locks the leg into position. At this point in the setup, you can extend the HiPod legs to their full length. Lock them loosely as you will most likely need to adjust them in the next step. Check the bubble on the top of the HiPod base to ensure that your legs are set evenly. Adjust the legs to make them level and check the bubble again. At this point in the setup, your unit should look like this, legs extended and locked into place. Shake the silver ring at the top of the base to confirm that your legs are rock solid. Any movement, readjust and try again. Once the leg is confirmed to be stable and the primary leg lock has been tightened, you can adjust the second leg lock into place. This is a redundant safety lock in case the primary lock ever gives way or slips. Both leg locks must always be used on each leg. Never extend a high pod tubing system until both leg locks are in place. You can see another view here of what these leg locks look like in their proper positions. Now, on the top of the base, just above the silver ring, you will find another ratchet. It's the same style as the one on the base plate. When it's open, you will be able to swing the tubes left and right. If you close the ratchet like this, it will grab the tubes inside of the base. This holds the tubes in the base while you're extending the tubing. New for 2014, you no longer need a tool to attach the HiPod head to the tubes. Simply find the head in the case and attach it to the top of the tubes. Then tighten it to the tubes with the ratchet you will find directly under the head. This will lock it securely into place. You can see a closer view of this motion here. When attaching the HiPod handle, make sure to mount the handle from the reverse side of where the pins are dangling from the tubes. Attach the handle by tightening the screw until it clamps onto the poles and holds by itself. If you purchase the X23, your monitor bracket will include an extra Y-shaped piece that acts as a sizer for the tubes so it can fit. If you have the X31, this piece will not be included. Take the monitor bracket, open it, and place it around the tubes. Once adjusted into position, twist the silver metal screw until it clamps down on the bracket, holding it to the tubes. You can see another view of this motion here. Notice the ratchet on the LCD bracket. If you unlock this ratchet, you will be able to adjust the angle at which the LCD sits on the bracket itself. Always make sure to unlock this ratchet before adjusting the angle of the LCD. Now we will attach the head to the handle. 
On the bottom of the high pod handle, you will see two nylon cords sticking out with carabiners attached. Pull out one of the nylon cords in one direction and the other in the opposite direction, meaning that in this camera view, one will go left and one will go right. Make sure that the cords are coming out of the bottom of the handle, allowing it to rotate the head. Also, make sure that your ropes are not crisscrossed. Now, on the handle itself, you will find two large silver screws. This first one is what's called the position lock screw. This will maintain the position of the handle wherever it happens to be at the moment when tightened. If you unlock it, the handle will move again. Now the second screw on the handle is found at the bottom. It's right in between where the two black nylon cords come out of the handle. If this screw is unlocked, you will be able to pull the cords out of the handle. If you lock that screw, you will no longer be able to pull these cords out. The purpose for this is when the unit is fully elevated so that you have the cords locked and they will not slip while moving the handle up and down. During setup, you will want to leave both screws unlocked. There are two types of video cables we include with the HiPod. We're going to start with the SD composite cables. These are the lower cable ports, and these are the upper ones. You will attach the cable on the strain relief hooks on the HiPod tube, and also at the bottom on the HiPod LCD mounting bracket. This holds the cables in place and prevents them from pulling on the camera ports or the LCD port on the unit. Make sure your strain relief is used to prolong your technology's lifespan. For HD cameras, your cables will look like this, an HDMI and separate LAN cable. The LAN cable is what sends remote control signal through the unit. You can see it here. The HDMI sends the video signal down from the camera to your HD LCD monitor. For HD cameras, the silver strain relief hooks do not apply. To create strain relief, tie a loose knot with the cables around the bottom of the L shape of the high pod head. To mount the LCD to the monitor bracket, find the groove in the back of the LCD. Match this up with the tip of the monitor bracket and slide into place. When satisfied, you can tighten the LCD to the bracket by twisting the screw in the back. This HD LCD monitor is capable of receiving HD and composite signals. For composite signals, if you're using a 31-foot video cable, take your red and yellow cables and plug them into both yellow cables coming out from the LCD. We are sending two video signals through the unit, the second through the audio line. For HDMI, find the standard size HDMI port and plug it into the opening on the side of the LCD. To attach the battery, line up the holes on the LCD battery with the pins coming out of the LCD battery plate. Find the grooves that will accept the battery and then push the battery down onto the pins. You should hear a beep indicating that power has been received. To test to make sure that the battery is connected properly to the LCD, turn the monitor on by pressing the middle button. Inside of your accessory case, you will find the silver Sony remote. Take the remote and clip it to the black plastic piece jutting out from the side of the handle. This will create a nice resting place for your hand while in use. Now, take the cable on the end of the remote and attach it to the black cable coming down from the unit. For SD cameras, this will be part of the video coil cable with red and yellow cords attached. For HD cameras, the black cable will be on its own. Now we will set up a camera. For either SD or HD cameras, open the window, flip it forward, and close it again to turn the camera on and keep it on. Now we will focus exclusively on SD cameras for the moment. On the back, you will find a port that is shaped like a D. You will find a corresponding cable in your accessory case called the D cable. You will see on one side it features yellow, white, red, and black cords, and on the other side a single black cord. For SD cameras, take the D cable and plug it into the corresponding colors on the long 31-foot video cable yellow to yellow, red to red, and black to black. The extra white cable on the D cord will not be used, so you can leave it dangling off to the side. Now, take the D cable and plug it directly into the camera itself. 
find the D-shaped port under the little door on the side of the camera and plug the cable in. Switching gears to HD cameras, there is an extra step involved. On the side of the camera, you will find a port that says Multi, a long, skinny, rectangular port. Take this little black cable called the Multi-Port Adapter Cable. This is what you will plug in directly to the camera instead of the D-cable. On the end of this adapter, you will find a D-shaped port. This will allow you to take the D-cable, just as it was in an SD camera version, and plug it into an HD camera. For HD cameras, this allows the remote at the bottom to communicate with the camera on the top, giving you full control over zoom and record functions. With HD cameras, the only cable on the end of the D cable that will be used is the black stereo jack. The red, yellow, and white cables will dangle off to the side and will not be used. Simply take the black stereo jack and plug it into the long, skinny cable running up and down the unit from the remote near the base. Now that the remote is set up, we can attach the HDMI cable from the camera down to the LCD monitor. Open the window on your HD camera and locate the HDMI port. For most cameras, you will plug in to HDMI Mini directly from the cable itself. Although for some it may vary for HDMI Micro and require an adapter. Either way, once your video cables are connected to the camera, it's time to mount the camera to the HiPod head. Find one of the golden screws on the top of the HiPod head, place the camera on top, and sandwich the camera to the plate by screwing the camera screw into the camera from beneath. This will hold the camera in place while it's moving in the air. At this point in the process, your unit is set to elevate. The camera should be mounted on the head, all cables attached, LCD on the tubes, legs locked and extended, and plate firmly on the ground. Your HiPod handle and head should be connected via the nylon cords. The X23 has four stages of tubing, whereas the X31 has six. Each stage of tubing has a cam lock that secures the tube in place. To elevate your unit, unlock the cam lock, push the tube into the air to your desired height, and lock the cam lock again. This will squeeze the poles together so that they cannot move. You will see a white line on the end of each tube recommending where the placement of the tube should be locked. There are safety pins for the bottom stages of the HiPod tubes. For the X23, there is a single pin for the fourth stage, whereas for the 31, there are three for the fourth, fifth, and sixth stages. Find the hole at the bottom of each HiPod stage, take the pin, and push the pin through the hole. This will prevent the tube from slipping if a cam lock for some reason fails. On each stage of the HiPod tubes, there is a strip of Velcro to keep the cables out of the way. Take the Velcro strip, open it, place the cable inside, and close it again. Beyond keeping the cables neat, it helps to act as a strain relief throughout the unit.